mission of the Variable Speed Limit Project is to modify drivers' behaviors, get them to slow down to a reasonable speed as they encounter uh, inclement weather or various conditions on the highway that they're not accustomed to. The Variable Speed Limit Project started as a result of a lot of major multi-vehicle crashes that happened on Interstate 80. They seem to happen year after year and we had in in some cases, in 2006, we had an incident where we had six people die in a 24 vehicle pileup. It closed the, the interstate and actually damaged the interstate because it became engulfed in fire. They had to rebuild the highway, Sorry, and not, not to mention the loss of life, which was significant. But the impact of the commercial industry alone, that I-80 is a, is a commuter road for east and west traffic from east coast to west coast. And when that is shut down, the freight does not get where it's going to, especially in, in lengthy periods of time. We've had closures of, of days up to a week. Some may be crash, most of them are crash related, but many of them then extend because of the weather conditions. There are estimates that if the interstate closes for a single hour, there's an estimate that it, it causes the economy a, a cost of about a million dollars. The next step was really the um, interest of the legislature they were challenging YDOT to come up with a solution for this. So working with the YDOT's executive staff, we put into place legislation that allows for variable speed limits. The variable speed limit project is basically some technology, um, electronic signs coupled with uh, road weather information systems and speed sensing to build a complete system that allows us to control the speeds of the traveling public. The Wyoming Highway Patrol helped implement the Variable Speed Limit projects because we realized early on as the project started that it required two components, the technological component and then the enforcement component of having the troopers on the road uh, enforcing the lower speed limits so that people knew we were serious. We have webcams positioned not only on Interstate 8 but throughout the state so that we can constantly watch the webcams and see what the elements are that, that are causing us to, to consider a speed limit change. Another thing would be the sensors that we have in certain areas throughout the roadways that actually monitor some ground temperature on our speeds. In various corridors we have um, a number of speed sensors. Uh, we may have as many as 30 speed sensors and we also have a number of road weather information systems and it may be as many as 15 uh, sensors in a, in a 50 mile um, stretch. We use a pace speed in order to set the speed limits. Um, the road weather information systems help us in the absence of someone on the ground to look at the visibility sensors and determine what the correct speed should be. The Transportation Management Center operates 24 hours a day and if there are necessary speed reductions we make those minute by minute. Uh, we feel that that's crucial because we gain credibility from the traveling public when we're responsive to the actual conditions. Myself and the troopers certainly have seen a significant change in driving behaviors as people respond to the variable speed limits. The very first change we saw was the trucking industry instantly followed the speed, the reduced speed limits. I think the truck drivers were thankful that we were reducing the speed limit. I know they were because they are thanking us for reducing the speed limit so that they can drive at a reasonable rate. And as the truck traffic goes on this major highway, so goes the passenger traffic. I think as the passenger vehicles see the truck drivers slowing down for the variable speed limit, they've, they've followed suit with that. So as long as we do a good job of matching the speed limit with the conditions, people tend to follow what we suggest on the speed limits. The VSL's helped us quite a bit uh, since it's been implemented. Uh, number one, we don't have near as many rear ends on snow plows as we did before. Um, before the VSL's were implemented, we had a lot of uh, semis rear-ending snow plows, cars rear-ending snow plows because of uh, excessive speed. Plus we don't seem to see that many uh, secondary accidents after a crash where you have traffic backed up and people are running in the back of them. So it's, it's made our job much, much easier. We want everybody to travel much like a train um, going down the highway at the exact same speed. That's the ideal situation. We want to minimize the speed distribution. The variable speed limit project has resulted in a dramatic uh, reduction in accidents along uh, the I-80 corridor. Uh, just the first year that uh, we began that operation, we saw over a 50% reduction in uh, injury accidents and about a 20% reduction in overall accidents uh, along that route. The proudest thing I'm with the VSL project is a partnership between White Ot and Wyoming Highway Patrol. What has a result of that 
this partnership is we've been able to make the highway safer for the motoring public, reducing crashes, reducing fatalities, reducing death, uh, reducing injuries, and reducing the amount of road closure so that the roadway stays open. That is, that is something significant for us and will always be.